The Second World War was one of the most controversial wars of all time, lasting only six years from 1939 to 1945. The war involved the vast majority of the world's countries including all of the great powers at that time, forming two opposing military alliances, the Allies and the Axis powers. A lot of countries were involved, and as a result, were also affected greatly by the war, some by choice, others had no choice. But there was one country that was spared during this chaotic time. The country didn't see war or partook in the war, even when its surrounding neighbors were up in arms. The country that was spared, that even Adolf Hitler couldn't touch, was the one and only Switzerland. Yes, they were spared from both sides and this is why. Even before the outbreak of the Second World War, Adolf Hitler made repeated assurances that Germany would respect Swiss neutrality in the event of a military conflict in Europe. He announced to the Swiss federal councillors that at all times, whatever happens, we will respect the inviolability and neutrality of Switzerland, reiterating this promise shortly before the German invasion of Poland. These were, however, purely political maneuvers that were intended to guarantee Switzerland's passiveness. Nazi Germany originally planned to end Switzerland's independence after it had defeated its main enemies on the continent. Luckily for Switzerland, that didn't happen. During World War II, Switzerland maintained armed neutrality, had no alliance with either side of the war, but asserts that it will defend itself against resulting incursions from any party. At the outbreak of World War II in 1939, Switzerland immediately began to mobilize for a possible invasion which took the country only three days. The parliament quickly selected the 61-year-old career soldier Henry Gissen to be general and 430,000 combat troops and 210,000 in support services, 10,000 of whom were women, were mobilized. Even though detailed invasion plans, Operation Tenenbaum was drawn up by the German military command, Switzerland was never attacked. Switzerland was able to remain independent through a combination of military deterrence, economic concessions to Germany, and good fortune as larger events during the war delayed an invasion. The Swiss military changed their strategy from one of static defense at the borders to a strategy of strong, well-stockpiled positions high in the Alps, known as the National Redoubt. The plan worked based on the condition that during an invasion, the Swiss would give up control of the economic heartland and population centers and direct its focus on the crucial rail links. This controversial strategy discouraged the Nazis' idea of an invasion. Despite the heavy mobilization of its forces, by 1940 Switzerland was completely surrounded by Axis powers as the Nazis invaded and occupied France, making it increasingly difficult to stay clear of the Second World War. And even though the country was not still involved in the war, Switzerland served as a base for espionage by both sides in the conflict and often mediated communications between the Axis and Allied powers by serving as a protecting power. In 194, the United States Office of Strategic SERVICES OS, was established in Bern, which was the first U.S. intelligence service to be created in Western Europe. It wasn't easy for the Swiss to stay put. The temptation to join in the war was getting stronger thanks to Nazi Germany repeatedly violating Swiss airspace. During the Battle of France, German aircraft violated Swiss airspace at least 197 times. In which, the Swiss shot down 11 German aircraft between 10 May 1940 and 17 June 1940, while suffering the loss of three of their own aircraft. Germany protested diplomatically at first then again with a second note that contained explicit threats. Hitler was furious when he saw that German equipment was used to shoot down German pilots, and he said they would respond in another manner. Later the Swiss Air Force was ordered to stop intercepting planes violating Swiss airspace, but instead to force intruding aircraft to land at Swiss airfields. In response to this Hitler and Hermann Göring sent saboteurs to destroy Swiss airfields, but they were captured by Swiss troops before they could cause any damage. This brief war between German and Swiss troops took place on the northern border of Switzerland throughout the war. By the way, not only Axis aircraft invaded the Swiss airspace, but Allied aircraft also did. Some damaged Allied bombers returning from raids over Italy and Germany would intentionally violate Swiss airspace, preferring internment by the Swiss to becoming prisoners of war. 
some American airmen attempted to escape into France after the Allied invasion of Normandy in June 1944, but Swiss authorities intercepted 183 internees, over 160 of these airmen were incarcerated in a Swiss prison camp until the U.S. State Department lodged protests against the Swiss government and eventually secured their release. Being surrounded by Axis-controlled territory, Switzerland also suffered from Allied bombings during the war, most notably from the accidental bombing of Schaffhausen by American aircraft on April 1, 1944. Eventually, the bombing became so bad that the Swiss declared a zero-tolerance policy for violation by either Axis or Allied aircraft and authorized attacks on American aircraft. Victims of these mistaken bombings were not limited to Swiss civilians but included the often confusing American aircrews, shot down by the Swiss fighters as well as several Swiss fighters shot down by American airmen. In 1945, 18 civilians were killed by Allied bombs dropped over Steinem Rhine, Bals, and Rafts. And after that, the most notorious incident came on 4 March 1945, when Basel and Zurich were accidentally bombed by American aircraft. The attack on Basel's railway station led to the destruction of a passenger train, but luckily no casualties were reported. With all these happenings, the Swiss, although somewhat skeptical, reacted by treating these violations of their neutrality as accidents. The United States was warned that single aircraft would be forced down and their crews would still be allowed to seek refuge, while bomber formations in violation of airspace would be intercepted. From 1943 onwards Switzerland stopped American and British aircraft, mainly bombers, overflying Switzerland on nine occasions, six times by Swiss Air Force fighters and nine by flak. 36 Allied airmen were killed. As a neutral state bordering Germany, Switzerland was relatively easy to reach for refugees from the Nazis. Switzerland's refugee laws, especially with respect to Jews fleeing Germany, were strict and have caused controversy since the end of World War II. From 1933 until 1944, asylum for refugees could only be granted to those who were under personal threat, owing to their political activities, only, it did not include those who were under threat due to race, religion, or ethnicity. On the basis of this definition, Switzerland granted asylum to only 644 people between 1933 and 1945. Of these, 252 cases were admitted during the war. All other refugees were admitted by the individual cantons and were granted different permits, including a tolerance permit that allowed them to live in the canton, but not to work. Over the course of the war, Switzerland interned 300,000 refugees. Of these, 104,000 were foreign troops interned according to the rights and duties of neutral powers outlined in the Hague Conventions. The rest were foreign civilians and were either interned or granted tolerance or residence permits by the cantonal authorities. Refugees were not allowed to hold jobs. Of the refugees, 60,000 were civilians escaping persecution by the Nazis. But because of dwindling supplies, between 10,000 and 24,000 Jewish civilian refugees were refused entry, on this note a Swiss government representative gave a statement, our little lifeboat is full. At the beginning of the war, Switzerland had a Jewish population of between 18,000 and 28,000, and a total population of about 4 million. By the end of the war, there were over 115,000 refuge-seeking people of all categories in Switzerland, representing the maximum number of refugees at any one time. Switzerland also acted as a refuge for Allied prisoners of war who escaped, including those from Auflag IVC. To make matters worse, Switzerland's trade was blocked by both the Allies and by the Axis. Each side openly exerted pressure on Switzerland not to trade with the other. Economic cooperation and extension of credit to the Third Reich, Nazi Germany, varied according to the perceived likelihood of invasion and the availability of other trading partners. Concessions reached their highest after a crucial rail link through Vichy France was severed in 1942, leaving Switzerland completely surrounded by the Axis. Switzerland had no choice but to rely on trade for half of its food and essentially all of its fuel, however, the Swiss controlled vital trans-alpine rail tunnels between Germany and Italy and possessed considerable electrical generating capacity that was relatively safe from air attack. Switzerland's most important exports during the war were precision machine tools, watches, jewel bearings, used in bomb sites, electricity, and dairy products. Up until 1936, 
The Swiss franc was the only remaining major freely convertible currency in the world, and both the Allies and the Germans sold large amounts of gold to the Swiss National Bank. Between 1940 and 1945, the German Reichsbank sold 1.3 billion francs worth of gold to Swiss banks in exchange for Swiss francs and other foreign currency, which were used to buy strategically important raw materials like tungsten and oil from neutral countries. Under pressure from the Allies, in 1943 quotas were imposed on the importation and exportation of certain goods and foodstuffs, and in 1944 sales of munitions were halted. However, the transit of goods by railway between Germany, Italy, and occupied France continued. North-South transit trade across Switzerland increased from 2.5 million tons prior to the war to nearly 6 million tons per year. It is important to know that Switzerland was still surrounded by Axis control territories and yet still maintained its neutrality. Switzerland was concerned that Germany would cease the supply of the coal it required if it blocked coal shipments to Italy while the Allies, despite some plans to do so, took no action as they wanted to maintain good relations with Switzerland. Between 1939 and 1945 Germany exported 10.2 million tons of coal to Switzerland. These imports supplied 41% of Swiss energy requirements. And in the same period, Switzerland sold electric power to Germany equivalent to 6 million tons of coal. Despite both the Axis and Allied powers pressuring Switzerland to not trade with the other side, Switzerland continued trading with Germany to dissuade them from invading. In the meantime, Switzerland grew wealthier, with 1.3 billion francs worth of gold being sold to Switzerland by the German Reichsbank in exchange for Swiss francs. Most Germans in the leadership, considering that Switzerland was a predominantly Germanic country, already surrounded by Axis, believed that Switzerland would follow the path of Austria when the time came and organically fuse with them without a shot fired. In other words, the Germans were playing a waiting game with Switzerland focusing more of their efforts on combating allied nations. By mobilizing its army, maintaining a strict neutrality policy, actively defending against foreign trespasses, and trading with Germany, the Swiss were able to escape the devastation that the Second World War brought to much of the European continent. Switzerland is the longest standing neutral nation in the world and has not taken part in a war since 1505. To summarize what you've watched in this video, the main reason why Switzerland was spared by both sides was that the Swiss were useful to both sides. A simple risk-to-reward ratio. Invading the country wasn't worth risking the beneficial trading partnership with help Germany's war effort. The neutral but infamous Swiss banks made Switzerland useful to the Nazis. So instead of suffering greatly by this war, some would say that Switzerland came out richer. And that is all we have for you today. Do not forget to give us a thumbs up if you found this video informative and also hit the subscribe button to get subscribed to our channel. Thank you for watching. Till next time.